Good evening, all. I wrap in, and here we are with the Metal Market Wrap-Up, and this wrap-up is for the evening, as we're here now on Wednesday, the 28th of June, 2023, 6, 10 p.m. Central Time. So the big event for me today was watching the heads of the Bank of Japan, England, the European Union, along with the U.S., on one stage in Portugal, explaining their positions on interest rates. Three of the four bankers, obviously, rates going up, Europe, UK, and America. Bank of Japan, not so, and not ready to lift them until they become convinced that inflation in their country will go up and stay up in the core inflation number. That is the whole difference. The dollar gets a bid off that. Uh, we heard our central bankers say, hey, uh, guess what? Service is strong. Employment numbers are strong. Markets got a rough time. Now, it's sort of opposite, as you know, what the Bank of uh, San Francisco did when they came out and say, oh, there's not a correlation between strong employment and inflation. Nonsense. I don't know where they're writing that. But, you know, you get these brilliant guys and anybody can come in. I remember as a child, my uncle would try to convince me and I'm going back. Maybe I was five years old, seven years old. No, you can't prove to me two and two is four. And you get confused. Well, I, I feel like that with these bankers. You get full employment, people have money, they spend, I don't give a damn the report they come out with. Is that fair enough? I think they have money, money in your pocket, you buy things. That causes buying power. Buying power could create inflation. Doesn't have to. If you have ample supply of everything, no. But if you don't, it's good money chasing bad. As you know, we already saw that even durable goods this week jumped. So when I look at the gold market, I can't get away from the fact that the market has got a pattern where it's under the 18-day average of closes. You can see how the prices have been falling. You can see that the market's got the pattern of lower highs, lower lows. You can see that the market is under the 18-day average, which is underneath the 100. The only moving average it's not underneath is a possible target at 1895.60. It latched on to the Bollinger Band. You get that Gorilla Glue trade where you hit it day upon day upon day. You had one day where you got away from it, then you started attacking it, and you're right back to doing that. And in the uh, slow stochastics, you have two days in a row already, closed days, where both numbers are under 20. If you tomorrow you do it, you embed, which gets even more bearish until that number is lost. So very bearish setup. Silver gold, okay. Now silver's losing a little bit. You went all the way up, you corrected, but this doesn't end it for silver. Silver looks to me a bit weaker than gold. The battle for September silver is very clear. It's the 200-day average of closes. Can it get and stay under it? That's the hardest thing. It's an oversold market. I'll let the market decide that, not me. When I look at the copper market, finally copper responded the way I thought, which is, if China, the biggest consumer of copper, isn't going to give you any stimulus in the way of housing, roads, and so on, this market's going nowhere. Because on their own, if they're looking for the outside business from the West, our economies were trying to contract them, not expand them. That's not good for the copper in the near term. And I hear all the analysts on TV, oh, copper's in short supply. It is. But you got to have demand to overcome it. Will it? Absolutely. As all of us, America, the UK, EU, come out of this pattern where we have to keep raising rates to build inflation, the very next cycle behind that is what? A consumption cycle. When we look at platinum, you still have your embedded readings. So good rallies in this market. I expect the pros to keep selling. The dollar's up to the key resistance. I've told you each day, Recently, I, I don't remember when, I, when it didn't begin. I said, you're looking for a battle between the 100-day average and the 18, and right now, who's winning? The bulls. If they can get a close over this, they open the door for even higher prices. The key is to not to get back under 101.96 and to stay and get over the 18-day average and keep the market there. So when you put it together, that's the game that I'm seeing in it. Now, I want to remind you that I put out a report on Lucid. Now, you'll say, Ira, Lucid? It's a car company. Yeah, I did. 
And the reason is I wanted to group Rivian, Fisker, Tesla, all these together and give you some of these companies. Because if you follow me in my spider ETFs, I've been covering that. Not that they're my favorite, but I've decided to do groups like Walmart, Target, Cole, um, Meta, Google, Apple. And I happen to be picking on the car companies because at some point here, they're going to be good ones that are left. Tesla dominates everything. As we know, the question is, what about the others? Well, this report that I put out it only goes on our website for three days. It comes off tomorrow. So if you want to view the report, it's there. It's a video report. You go to irepstein.com under the word research. You can click up here, the icon. That'll take you there as well. And come tomorrow at some point during the day, you won't see it again. I'm Ira Epstein. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all uh, in my next set of videos right after this one. Take care.